Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a kind king and queen who had almost everything. Yet every day they woke with sadness because they did not have the one thing they truly wished for, a child of their own. One happy spring morning, a beautiful baby daughter was born. The new baby brought such light and warmth into their lives that the king and queen decided to name her Aurora, which means the dawn. And as you probably know, dawn is the brightest, most beautiful part of the day. All in the kingdom gathered to celebrate the joyous news. Friends and family, courtiers and noble folk, plus the seven most powerful fairies in the land were all invited to the huge banquet. Following the most delicious feast and much joyful singing and dancing, the king announced that each of the seven fairies could approach the royal cot and in turn offer their magical gifts to the new princess. There was a sudden flash of blue light and a tiny figure in a large cloak magically appeared right in front of the king. Who could this mysterious person be? Gnarled, bony hands lifted up a hood to reveal the wizened face of old Griselda, a powerful fairy who, due to his forgetfulness, the king had forgotten to invite. Surprised, said Griselda. Her lips curled into a snarl. Um, a, a little, yes, muttered the king nervously. The queen smiled sweetly. Gracious fairy, Forgive us. We thought you were... Dead? No, not dead, Griselda said coldly. Splendid news, said the king, clicking his fingers. Now, come now, set a place for the great Griselda. Well, Griselda tutted loudly and sat down at the huge oak table to nibble on a grape. The first fairy approached the royal cot and gave the gift of beauty. The second gave patience, the third grace. The fourth fairy gave the gift of dance, the fifth the gift of song, and the sixth gave the gift of kindness. My turn, said Griselda, hobbling over to the royal cot. Aye, you shall have all of these wonderful gifts, she said to the baby, gurgling happily. Then she screamed at the top of her lungs, But prick your finger on a spindle and ye will die! Well, there came a gasp of horror from the guests, a single flash of light and a wisp of blue smoke, and Griselda was gone. The king fainted back into his throne, and the queen rushed to pick up Princess Aurora, holding her close in her arms. Fairies! Remove this curse, demanded the queen. But the fairies sadly shook their heads. They had already given their gifts. It was too late, and the curse could not be broken. Just then, a soft voice drifted from the back of the hall. Do not fear, your majesties. It was the youngest of the seven fairies, a kind young sprite named Leona. I have not yet given my gift and so I will do all I can. Who are you? demanded the king, scrambling to his feet and fixing his wonky crown. I am Fairy Leona of the Western Isles, Your Majesty. I cannot stop the wicked Griselda's magic, but I can change it, so that if the princess were to prick her finger, she would simply fall asleep. Excellent, said the king happily. For a hundred years, added the fairy. Nonsense! exclaimed the king. The queen nodded, and Leona took out her wand. A cloud of bright, sparkling sapphires circled above the princess's cot as Leona's wand swirled through the air. The sapphires danced this way and that until, with a final flourish, the hall fell dark and silent. Tis done, said the fairy. Well, that had been a long and eventful day. That night, the king and queen decreed that all spindles and spinning wheels be chopped into firewood. Fast forward, 
as any grown-up will tell you, the next 16 years flew by. Princess Aurora, much to her parents' relief, had grown up to be a patient, kind young lady in a land free of spindles and spinning wheels. Everyone admired her for her gentle nature and her enchanting voice. A sweeter girl had never walked the land. One morning, after polishing off her royal pancakes, the princess decided to go exploring. She made her way to the east tower and found a large wooden door. She pushed it open and walked through on her tiptoes. She found a small winding staircase and decided to climb it. When she reached the top, Aurora found an open door and walked right in. It was a room she didn't recognise, full of the most beautiful cloth. And there in the middle, on a lavish golden rug, was a lady working a large spinning wheel. May I please try? asked the princess politely. But she had startled the old lady who dropped the spindle. Now the princess, being a helpful soul, bent down to pick it up. There was a sudden flash of light as the tip of the spindle pricked the tip of Aurora's forefinger and a single drop of blood dripped onto the rug below. A cloud of blue mist surrounded by white sapphires filled the air above the princess. The old lady watched in horror as Princess Aurora closed her eyes and fell to the floor. Many miles away in a small cabin on the northern tip of the Western Isles, the good fairy Leona received news of the accident. She wasted no time in packing her magical potions and set off that night to arrive at the castle gates the following morning. The king and queen were in a sombre mood. My plan is a simple one, and your only hope if you wish to see your daughter again. Anything, replied the queen without hesitation, and the king nodded. Very well, I have prepared a powerful spell to put all here in the castle into a deep sleep. The sleep will only be broken when the princess awakes in one hundred years' time. That's preposterous, said the king. But the queen, understanding there was no other way, asked softly, How will we be safe? Do not fear, your highness, replied Leona. I shall protect all in the castle with a magical forest, the likes of which no one has ever seen. Even the largest ogre with the sharpest axe would be unable to cut through. Well, the king and queen kissed their sleeping daughter. With much sadness, they moved to their chamber and lay on the royal bed. Fairy Leona waved her wand and her magic spread throughout the castle. The stone corridors fell silent as the maids, footmen, butlers, and even Aurora's young puppy, Puff, fell fast asleep. A little while later, ten miles away, the good fairy turned to gaze at the majestic castle. Then, as promised, she created a magical forest, ten miles deep, with monstrous trees and thick brambles which grew to surround and protect the castle. Time came, and time passed. A lot can change in one hundred years. The kingdom had a new king and queen to rule over them, and the stories about the wicked fairy Griselda's curse had long been forgotten. Well, almost. One bright morning, the king's only son, Prince Alfredo, was out hunting with his two trusted friends when he spied the old castle far off in the distance. The prince asked his friends if they knew about the castle. When I was a boy, replied Davide, we were told that there was a huge ogre living there. They said if we went near, he'd catch us and eat us up. Oh, stuff and nonsense, said Simone sharply. It's a tale made up to scare children. It's nothing but a crumbling old ruin. A gruff voice came from a gruff voice came from behind them. Both wrong. They turned to see a crooked man in tattered clothes hunched over a walking stick fashioned from an old tree branch. He squinted up at them with his one good eye. 
Alfredo approached the old man and bent down on one knee. Tell me, my good sir, he asked, what do you know of the castle over yonder? Your Highness, said the old man bowing, over fifty years ago me grandfather said it belonged to a fine family much like your own. Go on, said the prince. Well, there in the tallest tower lies a princess, cursed to sleep forever, a real beauty, so they say. Davide and Simone both laughed under their breath at the unbelievable story. Well, thank you, my good man, said the prince, and turned to walk towards the thick forest. As he did so, the plants began to move. He kept walking and they drew back, creating a clear path. Prince Alfredo looked back at his friends, his mouth open in surprise. The old man grinned a toothless grin. Told you so, he mumbled and hobbled away. Davide and Simone tried to join the prince, but the thick brambles instantly grew back, blocking their path. Sire, called Davide through the undergrowth, what shall we do? It would seem the enchanted forest wishes me to walk alone. Go fetch my father, the king. As Davide and Simone rode to the castle, Alfredo walked deeper and deeper into the dense wood. After a while he came to a clearing to reveal an enormous castle. People lay asleep on the lawn, the castle steps and the battlements. Alfredo walked across the open drawbridge, through the main courtyard and into the castle. Everywhere he looked there were sleeping people. Some were snoring quite loudly. The prince remembered the old man's story and made his way up the winding staircase of a tall tower, stepping over sleeping maids and butlers on the way. He reached the top of the stairs, pushed open the door to reveal an elegant bed. Upon the bed lay the most beautiful girl. Prince Alfredo watched her in wonder. Suddenly a swirl of blue and silver light appeared above her. Her eyelashes began to flicker. And then she took a long, deep breath, yawned and opened her eyes. I had quite the dream, she said softly. Prince Alfredo dropped to one knee and bowed his head. My dear princess, what are your wishes? Give me a minute, said the princess, stretching and yawning. I mean, I only just woke up. Princess Aurora gestured for Prince Alfredo to help her up, and they walked together to the window. As they looked out upon the land, the mist lifted and the magical forest disappeared. Thick tree roots shrank back into the ground as quickly as they had appeared. Those hundred years passed. Who rides towards us? asked Princess Aurora, pointing towards three figures on horseback, galloping towards the castle. Prince Alfredo smiled. Fear not, princess. They are my good friends, along with my father, the king. With a sudden gasp, Aurora declared, Mother! Father! She ran from the room and along the great stone corridor to her parents' bedchamber. There she found a drowsy king and queen, beaming with joy as they saw their daughter. She instantly fell onto the bed and they all hugged and cried with joy. In just a few hours, the feast and celebrations were well underway and Prince Alfredo had introduced his friends and his father, the king, to Princess Aurora and her parents, the other king and queen. Both families sat at the top table feasting on the finest food and drink. Well, 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 said the prince's father. This is awkward. Two kings and one kingdom. Princess Aurora's father smiled. I am an old man. My only wish is to see my daughter well and happy. Agreed, replied the Prince Alfredo's father, the new king. I too have had more than enough of my royal duties. Perhaps it's time we put our feet up. A fine idea, replied Aurora's father, but I wonder who could take over. Well, they both looked over at their son and daughter, talking happily, 
at the far end of the table. Uh, "'There is one thing,' said the Queen with a glint in her eye. "'Your son is eighteen years old, and our daughter is one hundred and sixteen. "'Let us hope the age difference will not be a problem.' They all broke into fits of laughter which lasted until dessert. Alfredo and Aurora seemed to be getting on famously. Maybe, just maybe, then might be a happily ever after, after all. <laughs>